Democrats are scaling back their national convention scheduled for this August in Milwaukee. Joe Biden will accept the party's nomination in a much smaller venue than originally planned. The event is being moved from the 17,000-seat Pfizer Forum to a convention center downtown. Delegates have been told they will conduct their business remotely, although an unspecified number will appear in person. All large-scale gatherings, including fundraisers and welcome events, have also been canceled. President Trump visited Wisconsin Thursday. He toured and met with workers at a major shipyard there. His visit comes as new polls show Joe Biden now leading in the battleground state. For more, let's bring in CBS News political contributor and Democratic strategist Antoine Seawright. Antoine, first of all, it is so wonderful to see you. It has been so, so long. I'm really glad to have the chance to talk to you. Let's talk convention. I'm so glad to see you. So the <laughs> <laughs> so the Democratic National Convention is going to be held over four days in August, but in a far more scaled back fashion because of the pandemic. What do you make of this decision and who is now expected to make the trip to the convention? Well, I think it's uh, further clarity that the Democrats are not just talking the talk, but we're walking the walk. Uh, we've always said from the very beginning uh, that we would be guided by uh, science and data and healthcare professionals. Those were the North Stars that we have chosen to lead us, and we're sticking to that. Uh, at the end of the day, we're still in a pandemic. When you look at a place like Milwaukee, where you have a large portion of African-American people who make up the city, uh, we know this pandemic has continued to disrupt this country, and we know the havoc it is uh, causing in communities that look like mine. So I think it's smart. Uh, I think the Republicans are making a mistake uh, for what they're choosing to do with their convention. And I think both parties uh, had the opportunity uh, to choose the road that they want to travel. Democrats chose the road less travel by, and I think it's going to make all the difference. Meantime, Republicans moved their convention from Charlotte, North Carolina, to Jacksonville, Florida, where local officials have required fewer safety precautions. Why are civil rights activists concerned about this move? Well, I don't know if it's concern. I think it's just another example of the tone deafness that comes from Republicans and Donald Trump. We saw uh, what they wanted to do on the day of Juneteenth. They end up moving the rally because of the public pressure um, that came along with people asking, why in the hell would you have a rally on the day that we celebrate in this country the end of slavery and from 1865 from our people in Texas? Uh, and so part of it is their tone deaf. The other part is that when they choose to make decisions like this, Elaine, it is speaking to and speaking for a certain certain segment of people in this country uh, in which that type of rhetoric, that type of behavior tickles their ears. And the president, uh, the Republicans, and the RNC know exactly what they're doing and who they're trying to uh, move the needle with when they choose to go forward, knowing um, the backlash that could come along with this and who the backlash will come from. Well, according to a new Washington Post Ipsos poll, Joe Biden is leading President Trump among black Americans. And those voters also say that racism and police conduct are the most important issues in their choice of candidates for president. But as you know, Antoine, there has been frustration with the process and what some see as a slow pace of change. What do you think Democrats need to do to get people to actually turn out and make their views known at the ballot box come November? Well, Donald Trump asked uh, African-Americans, what in the hell do we have to lose in the 2016 election? I think the past several years of his presidency has demonstrated the fact that we have so much to lose. And if there is another four years of Donald Trump, there will be generations of people who look like me, Elaine, will have even more to lose than perhaps my sharecropping grandparents. I think that's been crystal clear by his behavior. That's number one. Uh, number two, I think black people understand that the behavior of Donald Trump and the track record of Joe Biden, if you compare to do, if you compare the two, we knew we know for certain who's going to do more for the issues and for communities that look like mine. And that's why you see these polls playing out the way they are to this point. But I will also be clear uh, and consistent of what I always say. 
polls are a snapshot of the time. The Biden campaign, Democrats, and yours truly have a responsibility to harness the energy that we see from people who are choosing to protest, who are choosing to make their voices heard, and translate that into steps and protests and participation at the ballot box. Because no matter what policy agenda Biden and Democrats put in place, you cannot govern if you do not win. And the fact of the matter is nothing will change unless we make changes at the ballot box. So to follow up on that, Anton, the poll we mentioned also found that Joe Biden is still struggling to connect with young black voters in particular, many of whom are, in fact, protesting in dozens of American cities. How do you think he can best appeal to and connect with them? Well, he's going to have to continue to make the case. He's going to have to meet young voters where they are. And when I say young voters, sometimes we get caught up in thinking young voters, voters only mean a certain segment of young voters. Voters, We have to meet all young voters where they are. We're going to have to continue to highlight the failures of Donald Trump in this administration, talk about what we are for, and help young voters understand how high the stakes are and what this election will mean, but not just today, but for tomorrows to come. Uh, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And I will always loudly declare for Joe Biden in this particular race, direction will be more important than speed. All right, Antoine Seawright, wonderful to see you again. Thank you so much. Good to Take see you. Care. Thank you.